this morning. Uh, my name is Beth Gibbons. It's my joy to serve as the pastor here at Hey Good. I am joined in worship leadership today by Carrie Hampson, Lori Mislichik, the praise team behind me, the tech team behind you, and we are so glad that you are here for worship. If this is your first time with us today, we would love for you to leave your contact information with us so that we can reach out to you, learn a little bit about you. We have connect cards over at the community prayer table. On the front, there's a QR code. You can just scan that and fill out our connect form. Or on the back, you can um, complete your name and contact information and then place it in the bowl that is out in the lobby where we receive our offering. Um, we have been telling you for the last couple of weeks about our new church app. Today, there are instruction sheets in the lobby. If, um, if you have not downloaded it yet, we encourage you to do so. Um, in the first part of this week, we will be sending an email from our database out to everyone's email addresses that we have, and that is linked to our app, and we'll invite you to log in. If you already use our e-giving platform, you probably already have a login because they're all connected in, in a mysterious way that I don't understand. Um, and um, if you do not use our e-giving platform, you will need to log in. And once you are logged in, you will magically have access to the church directory on your phone um, and also be able to track your giving. And you think, well, why would I want the church directory on my phone? And I say to you, well, you know, you might need to go drop off some goodies at Carol's house because she's so amazing. So you could pull up her address on the church directory and you could click on it and it would immediately go to your navigational system and you could drive to Carol's house. Isn't that awesome? Um, it, it's a really a wonderful way to stay connected. Coming up three weeks from yesterday, we are excited to again welcome the Bayside High School community to our West parking lot as we host a tailgate before their homecoming parade. Um, we want you to use the link that's in your weekly email to sign up to let us know what tailgate food you're going to be bringing um, to share with our community. The weekend after that, Sunday, October 16th, we have our first Worship Without Walls Sunday. A day of serving the community that I talked about last week in my sermon. Um, there are details in our beacon, but briefly, we are going to be doing a cleanup at Bayville Park. We're going to be packing over 10,000 meals for the hungry, dehydrated uh, meals for the hungry in this space, and hopefully also doing some work over at Luxford Elementary in their courtyard. So we're excited about uh, that Sunday coming up in October. Um, our men, United Methodist men's and women's groups are leaving us, um, and there's no information about this anywhere yet, so listen, um, <laughs> leaving us in collecting flood buckets for the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, UMCOR is one of the GLOBE's um, leading uh, disaster response agencies, and flood buckets, um, look, I look like I'm holding a bucket, 10-gallon uh, buckets with the top on them that are filled with supplies to help uh, muck out when there's been a flood. Um, those supplies were largely depleted with the flooding that happened earlier in the summer in Kentucky um, and Virginia and other places. So um, we are um, trying to bolster those supplies. And that call came out a couple weeks ago before Fiona and Ian were even a thing. So um, if you're interested, Pete Kundrat and Marsha Sokolowski are gonna be uh, leading that effort and you'll hear more about it in the coming Today we continue a worship series called BUMC as we consider the meaning of our United Methodist faith tradition. This morning we start by exploring what it means to be the people of God who attend to the ordinances of God. As we move into worship, I want to invite you to take a couple of deep breaths, to breathe in God's Holy Spirit, as you breathe out to release anything that you're worried about or preoccupied by. And to just breathe in and out and center yourself on the God who is waiting for our worship. I invite you to please stand and follow me in our invitation to worship. United Methodists are people who Attend to the ordinances of God. Attend. Pay attention to practice make real in our lives. Ordinances of God. Practices that Jesus models and John Wesley encouraged. 
We might need to learn more. Let us worship and explore. Please remain standing as we sing our praise.
story's just begun. Fail you want to find me, that's what my father does. Fail you want to find me, that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame out.
information means. Can you guys take a guess? What was it? Going to church. Spiritual formation is about how we grow in our relationship with God, how we stay in love with Him and continue to learn more about Him. So when you guys come to church like you are right now and we talk, you're learning more about God. You're participating in spiritual formation. We're actually about to go down the way to our kids' class that we call Kids Christian Formation Time. See that? That's going to help us learn more about God, too. And these are important ways that we continue to grow in our relationship with him. Now, do we just do this on Sundays? No. You're right. No. We're supposed to do this during the week, too. But we, church isn't always held on Sunday. Pastor God isn't preaching every, every day during the week, is it? You can read the Bible at home. That's right. What else can we do? You can share and talk about God at home with your brothers and sisters and your moms and dads. That's right. What else can you guys do? What do you think? You can pray. What else can we do? Was that what you were going to say, pray? <laughs> yeah. It's exactly right. We can pray, too. When we do these practices at home, we're growing in our spiritual formation as well. So I'm going to challenge you guys this week, okay? We got seven days till we return and we're able to worship again. But I want you guys to do something this week for your spiritual formation. Whether you pray a little bit more at home, whether you read your Bible, whether you talk with mom and dad or your brother or sister about God. Do you guys think you can do that this week so we can grow in our spiritual formation with God? I think you can too. Do you think we should make our parents do it too and yeah. challenge them as well? Yeah. Yes, I think so too. So we invite our congregation and our friends online and all of our friends up here to try and add a little bit more spiritual formation in their weekly routine through prayer or reading their Bible or talking with others about God. Do you think we can all do it? Yeah. I think so too. So let's go ahead and turn to God in prayer. So let's go ahead and fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me and congregation repeat after me too. Dear God, Dear God thank you so much, thank you so much for, the for the relationship we have with you. Have with you. Help, us Help us to practice, to practice daily, daily our spiritual formation, our spiritual formation with you. So we, may grow so we may grow and learn more, and learn more about, you. about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Testament reading comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Whoever loves someone who is a parent loves the child born to the parent. This is how we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep, keep God's commandments. This is the love of God. We keep God's commandments. God's commandments are not difficult, because everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has defeated the world, our faith. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. work in us, that 
we might be reshaped to look more like Christ. Amen. Attend to the ordinances of God. Even a Wesley nerd like me has to admit that those are not really fun and feel-good words uh, to connect with. So we are going to, in this third week, as we continue what it, to think about what it means to be a part of the United Methodist faith tradition, we are going to unpack what it means to attend to the ordinances of God. It really does sound like a you know, 1750s language, doesn't it? Well, as we said in the invitation to worship that Carrie led us in, to attend to something is to pay attention to it, to, to practice it, to make it real in our lives. And in 1742, John Wesley was in this situation. He and some of his friends had started these small groups at Oxford University um, about 10, 15 years prior, and they were actually starting to get some traction out in the real world, and people were starting to flock to the movement. So he wrote this uh, paper, I think we'd probably call it a white paper today, called The Character of a Methodist. And in that paper, he described the foundation which would establish an individual or a group in the Methodist tradition and keep it growing over time. He sort of he gave some how-tos in that paper. And as Steve Harper argues, Wesley's ideas were not novel. Um, they laid out, though, a life of dis discipleship, lived in relationship to the spiritual practices that all Christians have followed since the time of Jesus. These spiritual practices are what Wesley called the ordinances of God. Um, what our reading from 1 John today calls the commandments. So why is it important to keep the ordinances of God, to engage regularly in the spiritual formation, the spiritual practices that shape our hearts and our lives? Well, just like a healthy body requires attention to certain habits that impact our body, a sustainable, healthy faith requires attention to habits that impact our faith. Again, Steve Harper writes this. In a world where words are cheap, and character is counterfeited. We want to be assured that we are giving ourselves to something real. Amen. Amen. Harper continues, when we see it, we're willing to invest in it. And we usually do so by some sort of deeply meaningful experience, but it doesn't take us long to discover that something more is needed to sustain the original. In fact, we usually learn that we can't sustain all the ways we felt at the beginning because some experiences were not meant to last forever. Instead, we must move into a more intentional life that nourishes and expresses what first got us started. So I expect that many of you are like me and you can point to, to moments in your spiritual journey that are, that are mountaintop experiences, spiritual encounters that deeply shape and form us. The, the Christmas Eve, the Easter, the Good Friday worship service that, that just touched you and, and turned you. The prayer with a group that overflowed with the presence of the Holy Spirit. The song that just always touches you and lifts you up. The mission trip at the retreat that was transformation. Just last night, one of my daughters called me uh, about 9 o'clock. Um, she had just gotten out of an um, award presentation to someone who has been a hero to her since 2018. And she was the only student at JMU that got invited to go to this award presentation and, and be present with this person who was just such a hero, such a giant to her. And when she called, she was like, I mean, she, she just, she was tripping over her words, right? I mean, she was so excited to have, have just been in his presence and talked to him and, and gotten to know him. A, a, a real mountaintop experience. But you can't bottle it and carry it with you forever. In order to be sustained, we need practices that can keep us connected to God. We need to attend to the ordinances of God. And the need for those practices is deeply connected to our United Methodist theology of grace. That's the agent of our salvation. That's the language we use to talk about how we are saved in the United Methodist Church. We have a confrontation with grace. As United Methodists, underst and we understand that there are three different types of grace, prevenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. 
First, grace is the love of God that is stirring in our hearts before we can even understand that in our minds. Grace is why we baptize infants, because we believe that infants are stirred by the love of God before they are even cognitively able to, to understand and respond to that. That kind of grace is called prevenient grace. Prevenio in Latin means come before. The love of God that comes before we even realize it. Grace is also the agent of our salvation because it sets us right with God. The, the modern illustration to understand this justifying grace is a word processing program that magically justifies the document, right? It, it makes it not right a line, not left a line, but all of the lines are magically even. That is what Christ did when he died on the cross. His death took away the power of sin over us and realigned us, set us right with God. Justifying grace reorients us to a life of Christ. And it often grabs hold of us at one of those mountaintop experiences that I mentioned. So grace comes before, grace realigns, and grace also continues to work with us and work on us as we travel our journey of faith. And that's where the ordinances of God enter the picture. This grace that accompanies us on the journey was called sanctifying grace by John Wesley. It's a grace that surrounds us through our pilgrimage of faith. It's a grace that is there when we feel really close to God, and it's a grace that's there when we're really struggling with God. Wherever we are, that sanctifying grace is with us, sanctifying, perfecting us into new creations in Christ. Now, in order for us to experience sanctifying grace, we have to stay engaged with our lives of faith. We have to open ourselves to be spiritually formed by grace. That's why spiritual formation is the word that we are using today as our worship focus. United Methodists believe that the journey is not over once we've been justified once we've been aligned to Christ. We continue to move forward. Sometimes we move backward, amen? But that forward and backward movement in that journey towards Christ continues throughout our lives as we are formed into the image of Christ. So if that's why we need to be spiritually formed, if that's why we need to keep the ordinances of God, to, to grow in that sanctifying grace to look more like Christ, the next question is the how. What are those ordinances of God that John Wesley emphasized? How do we do that? Well, Wesley characterized our faith practices into two groups, works of piety and works of mercy. And those can also be public and personal. And i kind of got to look so I don't mess this up right now. So you have works of mercy at the top of the cross, works of piety at the bottom of the cross. And then on the left, you can have personal acts that are, that are happening kind of inside of you. And on the right, public acts. Uh, like coming to worship. While you're having a personal worship experience inside, you're also with a group of people, so it's a public thing. I also worship in the woods by myself in a hammock, um, right? That, that's also worship, but it's more of the private right. So all of those things um, make up um, the, the means of grace, the works of piety and works of mercy. That can include worship, Bible study, prayer, but also visiting the sick visiting the imprisoned, giving to charity, doing things that care for others. We call these the means of grace. They are the way that we experience God's grace and come to know God more fully. Wesley knew that if we practice our faith in these ways, we would recognize the free and unlimited grace that God pours out to us. The writer of 1 John says, we love God when we keep God's commandments. A bit earlier in chapter 4, the writer says, Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So in order to know God, Wesley knew we have to love. We have to love God. We have to love one another. We have to love not just passively but actively in practices that keep us in relationship with God and with one another. We do that when we engage more deeply in spiritual formation. So here at Haygood, we have lots of ways that we offer for you to attend to the ordinances of God. You're in one of those ways of interformation right now, worship. Um, I don't know if you notice, but each week when I pray before I preach, I invite God to reshape us, to form us, to look more like Christ. That is what worship is all about. 
being reshaped and reformed into God's image. We also have small groups for children down the hall right now in children's Christian formation, for youth, for adults, where people are able to explore scripture and faith together. We have some new small groups bubbling up right now for adults of different ages and stages of life. Uh, you can find out more about those in our weekly email, The Beacon. Uh, we also have some small groups that are reforming in this season. One of our adult Sunday morning small groups met for the first time again this morning. And several of our women's groups are getting re-energized. Last week, in terms of those outward practices, we focused on lots of the different ways that you can serve God through Hey Good. Uh, and I'd also lift up those among us who visit the sick and the homebound, those who take communion out into the community. Right now, we're working on strengthening our intercessory prayer ministry, the ways we pray for each other and for the world. If you are someone who is intentional about praying for others, we would love for you to join our prayer team. You can reach out and let us know. Out in the lobby, you will see on the windows across the lobby from us, there are posters with these words, spiritual formation, serving, community. You can sign up on those posters to be connected to one of the ministries that's in that area. We hope you'll take a few minutes to look at them and to see where God might be beckoning you right now. Hey Good is a community where we offer lots of ways to engage in spiritual formation. But there are as many ways to grow spiritually as there are people in this room. It's it's not a, a prescription, right? It's a description. I know people who connect best with God when they're on a boat on the water. Being in a room in a worship service doesn't really do it for them. They come, but where they really get fed is on the water, right? There, there are lots of different ways where you can make yourself available and open to be shaped and formed by God. And one of the things that I've discovered on my own journey of faith is that there are, there are certain practices that are anchors for me, certain, certain foundations for me, and I can trace those over a lifetime. One of the ones that um, I think about most often is praying before dinner, whether it was with my family at the table, in the round table that was my great-grandmother's in the kitchen, my dad would lead us in prayer that his dad would always say, whether it was when my children were young, I'm praying a blessing over a meal. Now, as I'm an empty nester and live by myself, and if I remember to pause and give thanks. When I'm out with somebody in a restaurant, just a simple, thank you God for this food as you lift the plate. That's been a foundational one for me in my life. But there are other moments when my journey's gotten stale I've gotten complacent, and I've needed to mix things up and add something in. Remember, we're moving on toward perfection, in Wesley's words. And sometimes we need a new practice to nudge us out of a, of a complacent space. The good news is that when we engage in keeping those commandments and we actively stay in love with God, we will discover transformed hearts and lives. Thanks be to God, who is at work within us by the power of Amen. As we continue in our worship today and we respond to God's word, we invite you into some personal reflection on how you seek to do no harm in the world. Um, in your seats or you were handed some pieces of paper that have part of our BUMC logo on them and ask the question, how have you grown in your relationship to God through Hagar? Um, your answer might come in uh, a story or a spiritual practice or a small group experience. But we invite you to share those stories. We're going to be sharing them with the congregation as a witness to all that God is doing um, in just a couple of weeks. There's a glass bowl over on the prayer table um, under the word spiritual formation where you can put your responses if you write one. As we continue in our worship, we have the joy today before we sing our response of receiving new members. And so I'm going to invite the Marcuses to come up. Um, Heath and Jen and Jack. Um, are joining um, Hey Good Today. You may see Jen at the drumming table. Um, Heath is on our FAT team, P-H-A-T, Facility a Physical Plant Alignment Team. We're all bristling a little bit of the FAT team, don't worry, that's the thing. Um, and Jack is a student, senior at Kelly, right? Now, um, Heath and Jen also have, um, and Jack has two older sisters, two daughters, but they are living their own lives, um, are they not? Okay, I see some, 
So people coming up to stand with them, to sponsor <laughs> them, yes, um, as they have come to, um, to be a part of Hagen. Actually, we're celebrating with Lindsay, one of your daughters, who just got her first job post-grad. <laughs> it's going to be an, uh, uh, act, uh, first, sorry, yes, first acting job post-grad, post-grad, which is what she trained for. So she'll be moving to Philly uh, in January. Okay, awesome. Let me ask you all uh, two um, questions. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If you will, you say, I will. I will. And as members of this congregation, Hey Good United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in our ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If you will, you say, I will. I will. Yeah. And congregation, you have a blessing and response to give them. It's going to be on screen. We give thanks for all that God has already given us. As members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome them. As we uh, continue in our worship and we think about um, how our gifts make a difference, we give thanks for the many small group ministries that we have here at Haygood, the many ways that people connect with one another. We have a new group for young adults that's just started on Monday evenings, um, and so we encourage you, if you're in that uh, 20s, early 30s uh, segment, to um, check that out. Um, we, we have small groups bubbling up all the time. Uh, if you're interested, let us know, connect with us. We would love to connect you to a small group. Um, your gifts to Hey Good make small group ministries happen. Your gifts make a difference. You can give online by placing a check and offering bowl in the lobby um, or by mailing a check to the church. As the band sings, you're invited to put prayers over on our community prayer board, to work on those reflections, and to simply sit in the I am surrounded
to share with you this morning. We want to continue um, to pray for Regina Snyder. She's home from rehab. Still needs lots of healing. Uh, Bruce, um, who is Brian Gerber's brother-in-law, has been in the hospital for about two weeks. Should be coming home today. Um, Hazel and Norm Karen's granddaughter, Cecilia, who worships here sometimes, uh, continued prayers for healing as they try to figure out a mysterious um, disease that's made it difficult for her to walk. Um, Keith Best, um, our traditional uh, musician, is going through some medical testing, so prayers uh, for healing uh, for him as well. And uh, we have a graveside funeral Friday for Roseman Adams, who died last Tuesday at the age of 91, um, full of and thankful for the life that she had lived. So we gather um, at Rosewood Kellum on Friday to lift her up. Let's join together our hearts in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that we stand in a long line of believers who have been faithful through the ages. Here at Haygood, in our own lives, and in the United Methodist Church, as well as in the Church Universal, you've led your people through trial and difficulty. You've, you've always set before us hope for today and hope for a better tomorrow. May we know that same faith that is filled <coughs> with a hope in things not seen. May we also know that that faith is nurtured by the practices that will shape and form us more deeply in our relationship with you. Help us to be reshaped in your love so that our lives take on the shape of Christ. Lord, give us dreams and visions of a kingdom here and now which erases violence and war and replaces them with peace and love. Strengthen us to persevere when the days are long and the progress seems slow. Instill in us a passion for people, all people. A passion that flows from your enduring love for all creation. We pray this day for all who have been or will be in the paths of hurricanes and other natural forces this week. We pray for people in Alaska, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. Canada, and Cuba, and Florida, all of those being impacted by Fiona and Ian. Lord, our hearts cry out for peace in our world. We pray for the nation of Iran. As protesters cry out against oppression and are met with violence. We pray for the ongoing conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. We pray for peace in our city streets and in the walls of our homes. Pray for all who seek healing, for those with broken hearts and bruised bodies. In particular, we pray for the family and friends of Roseman Adams. We pray for a family member losing her vision, for gun violence in our communities, for Chris Terrell and the USS Leyte Gulf, for colleagues in toxic work situations for a coworker dealing with health issues and a sister's migraines, for Regina and Cecilia, Keith and Bruce. We also lift to you the silent needs of our hearts in these moments. And all of these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Will you stand as you're able as we sing our commitment? <coughs>
distracted amnesia I forget that you keep coming around There ain't no way you ever let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy No, I can't pray Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. 